Hey, I'm NipFX, but you can call me Nikolai, and today it's going to be you, Kevin Barillion, and Jay Specify. This is from a live stream on my Twitch channel a few months ago, and while I was there too, and so was Manu Slitaran, this video contains just Kevin's presentation about Jay Specify, a project spearheading a set of standard annotations for Java static analysis, specifically for tracking null. After Kevin gave us a great overview, we had a detailed conversation about the project, including an illuminating exchange on Project Valhalla and why it cares about null. But to keep this video short-ish and sweet, I'll upload that separately, hopefully before the year ends. This video is just an introduction to JSpecify. Enjoy. Hey, I'm Kevin Burley, and um, I've been at Google for quite a while. Um, I work on, I initially founded a team called Java Core Libraries, and we have now evolved to Java and Kotlin ecosystem. Uh, and we provide things to make your lives easier when you're writing Java code. So long ago, I spearheaded the release of a library called Guava that you might have seen. Um, and now I lead the JSpecify effort. Hi, everyone. I'm Manu. Uh, I'm a computer science professor at the University of California, Riverside. Uh, do a lot of research in the area of uh, programming languages, uh, program analysis uh, to help build better developer tools. Uh, and before I joined at UC Riverside, I worked at various companies uh, for several years, including Uber. And while I was at Uber, I was the initial uh, author of Nullaway, which is uh, highly related to, uh, to the JSpecify effort. So we're looking forward to having this discussion. All right, uh, here we are to talk about Java, Null, and JSpecify, and we are us. The same people who just introduced ourselves are still the same people uh, here. We're both here to answer uh, all your questions for however long you have them, but I volunteered to give the initial speed run um, through some slides for you. And instead of cutting this down to 15 slides, I really am going to try to speed run it and set up questions without necessarily fully answering them, so type into the chat and let us know what you want to know more about, and we'll come back to those things. Uh, in addition to us, here is a list of some of the other organizations that are in the group um, that are working together on this effort. All right, so uh, why are we here? Um, Java, as you know, is completely oblivious to null. It, it doesn't know where it might come from. It doesn't know where it can go. At least at compile time, it doesn't know these things. And then suddenly, it, it cares a lot about null at runtime. And I think it's safe to say that no developer in history has ever enjoyed receiving a null pointer exception when, when trying to run their code. Uh, many other languages have figured out a way to deal with this um, and have null aware type systems uh, at compile time. In fact, Kotlin was born with that feature and several languages have even managed to transition to that, that feature. Examples include C Sharp, TypeScript, um, and on the JVM, recently, Scala 3. And uh, an interesting case is Dart, which just announced last week that they have finished crossing the chasm to the other side. And null awareness in the language is no longer just optional. It's actually mandatory for code on Dart 3 and above. Uh, we want that kind of thing in Java. It sounds really nice. Um, we'd like it as a language feature, but we have to accept the fact that that will be a very long way off in the future not just for the release to happen, but you've also got to figure it needs time to percolate through the libraries of the world. And you know you really want this nullness information to be present in your library's API, but it will not be able to use a language feature until it's ready to de-support all the versions of, of the language before that point. So that's the problem with API visible language features. So it's going to be a very long time till we have our real um, wish. But in the meantime, we have a lot of great build time analysis tools that you should already be using. They're already doing a lot of good. Um, we saw some of them a, a few slides back. Uh, they require, instead of having you know a nice language feature, they just require some annotations to be in your source code to give them the information that the source code itself doesn't give them. So uh, you know, first thing you have to do is just pick which set of annotations you're going to use. Here's a still frame from a presentation at a recent conference. And uh, you know competition is healthy up to a point. But as we look at um, this slide a little more closely, we've got one annotation set that's tool specific, uh, one that's tool specific, uh, tool specific, tool specific. 
Uh, here's one that's library specific. So that's a, a breath of fresh air. Um, and all of these have different, you might not be able to tell, they have slightly different names of the annotations. They have slightly different uh, lists of target elements you can put them on, different sets of support annotations that come along with them, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but what's this on top, Java X? Um, surely that's as standard as we could hope for. It's almost as standard as Jakarta, after all. Um, so here's the problem with that. Here's a, a screen cap from the JSR 305 um, page. It has this word dormant on it. The project actually shut down 11 years ago for reasons I could only speculate about. Um, so they never reached consensus and they never made a release. So actually, how were they how were they on this slide in the first place if they never had a, a release? Well, what happened is that at some point someone just grabbed their their draft work and threw their class files into a jar and stuck them up on Maven Central, which is a very illegitimate thing to do. It should never have been allowed. And I would like to say that whoever did it should should be sorry, but there is a small possibility it was me. I don't completely remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I did, I apologize, but I think the alternative is that we would have nullness annotations in Guava today if I, if I hadn't done that. So maybe this is the lesser of two evils. In any case, um, oh, look, here's some bullets. Um, in any case, this is no standard either. Um, what makes the situation maybe a little bit less bad is that each of the tools does recognize the annotations owned by other tools to some approximation. Um, we can also cut the, the giant field, and there were many more than just in that slide. There's a pretty long list. And we can cut that field down to just the four or five that define type use annotations because we don't just want to be able to express that a list is null. We'd also like to be able to express that it is a list that contains strings that might be null. And you need type use annotations to be able to do that. You could even have nullable in both places. Obviously, a nullable list is bad practice, but if you have one, you'd like to be able to, to annotate that fact. Um, once again, none of these were produced by uh, consensus, and there isn't even what you might call a de facto standard that emerged from this. If you go to Stack Overflow and search for which annotations should I use, you'll get a very long answer saying there is no good answer. So we have the situation where there are no standards out there, um, and we are trying to create one. <laughs> And standards are very useful things. If you don't believe that standards are very useful things, here are a couple examples of standards that I guarantee you are very thankful for. Um, AC chargers, the fact that most of the world has converged on, on USB-C is very handy. Character encodings, don't get me started. So JSpecify is actually solving two problems, and that was just the easy one. They're technically independent problems, but this one is a little nastier. So here's a library. And uh, not just any library, a library with users. Um, and they want to annotate their library for nullness. And, and so, say they pick, um, you know, they pick McAnnotations, McJarface to depend on. There's still a question, many questions of how exactly to annotate that library. By which I mean, um, in most cases, it's clear where to say nullable and where to say non null. But there's always this long tail of interesting cases where it's not clear exactly whether to use it or not, and you need to make a decision. And so what happens is you do that, and you get this situation where you made most of the tools happy, but then you get a bug file from one of your users saying, I'm trying to get my code to pass nullness analysis, and your library is annotating incorrectly. And you try to fix that, and you, you end up fixing them but breaking somebody else. Uh, in this case, you broke null away. Manu, what are you doing here? Uh, your tool is broken. I'd like to be able to say, come on, Manu, get with the program. But the question is, what program? There is no program to get with, right? That's why we're here. So clearly, we just need to get together and decide what things mean. Um, I think null, you know, I think nullable means it can't be null. No, I think nullable means it can be null. Um, and I'm sure there's a, a few other questions uh, than that. But really, how hard could it be? Um, if you ever catch yourself asking that question, uh, check yourself. Um, it's about this hard. Um, I don't even know if you can make out these words, but don't try to read it anyway. 
it's not a good book. Uh, in fact, let's just shriek and get that off of our screen, like we like we saw a spider or something. Um, it's just to give you an idea that there are many situations you could find yourself in where you need an answer and you need a better, you just need a reference that's better than, well, it seemed to make my tool happy when I did this. Um, doesn't mean you have to learn all that stuff up front, but we in the JSpecify group have to decide answers for these things. And by a process of consensus between tool owners and library owners and you, that's the only way we get to this happy picture that we're, we're trying to get to. So it doesn't mean that tools have no flexibility at all. What we're defining is what the annotations mean, what information is conveyed by those annotations, very, and we're specifying that very precisely. Um, so if the tool acts like the annotation means something completely different from what it means, that's going to cause problems. But short of that, it can still respond to the information however it sees fit, and it can certainly um, recognize additional annotations beyond the ones that we specify. Um, some of them recognize a useful annotation called polynol, and they're perfectly allowed to do that because that the code is just providing more information to them, and then they can take advantage of that information. So I mentioned we're solving two problems at the same time. Why are we even solving them both at the same time? You usually want to avoid that kind of thing. We're both providing the annotation types and precisely pres precisely specifying the semantics. The reason to do them both together at the same time is basically Javadoc. I feel that when you as users are looking for that reference you can count on, you deserve to have that reference be just one click away from your, your usage of the annotation. It should be right there um, for you. So that's why we're doing them together. I will skate very quickly over a few design decisions that we have made, but this is a very big topic and I'm not really gonna discuss any of them in detail. That's what we have the Q&A for. First of all, there are we have converged on four annotations uh, to include. The first two are the ones that are probably easier to understand. Nullable means I intentionally want null to be one of the values uh, acceptable to this type. Non-null means I intentionally do not want null. Um, but every language that I have mentioned that's made this transition always um, gives you a way to sort of flip the script and basically make non-null the default. Um, they usually do that through uh, compiler flags or config files. We think it's important to have the information in the code. So we have an annotation called null marked that you can put on any scope from a method all the way up to a module or a package if you're not using modules. And then if you want to um, you know, counteract that at a narrower scope, you can back out of it with null unmarked. Um, that basically makes null non-null the default within that scope. Uh, tools can still do some checking outside of null marked code, but they just don't have very much information to act on so they can't catch that many problems. Um, those are things I think I just said. Um, we hope that most users, most of the time, will be able to handle most uh, situations with most of a under, uh, shallow understanding of, of what's really going on. Um, basically, you can express where you want null to be, you can let your tool do its thing, and when it complains, then you have a decision to make. Uh, should I ask Stack Overflow or should I ask ChatGPT? Um, and then you do whatever it says. You adjust the annotations, or you fix the code, or you suppress the warning. Or I um, suppose the fourth option is delete the file and decide that you didn't need it that much anyway. But if you're willing to take a, a deeper look at what's going on, it, it will be of some benefit to you. And I'm only going to give the barest overview here. What we're doing and what the other languages have done is extending the type system. Only with annotations, we're sort of faking extending the type system because we're not changing it for real. But conceptually, what we're doing is saying, all right, Java says that null is automatically a member of every reference type. But what if it didn't do that? What if we, through when you use null marked on your code, we will simulate Java not automatically adding null onto every reference type? So string means string, like an actual string with some, you know, zero or more characters. And if you wanted a string or null, then you will ask for it. Um, and there's also non-null, but it's actually not needed that often because it basically becomes the default. And of course, in this relationship it makes foo naturally a subtype of nullable foo. So wherever the, um, 
Java language spe specification talks about subtyping, we apply our nullness specific rules in those same situations in the same way. Um, here are some specific design choices to not discuss now, but that you can bring us back to later. Uh, four kinds of nullness, sorry, just types, annotations explicit, type parameters default to non-null, this uh, concept of projections, and the perhaps surprising fact that you do not annotate local variable types. Again, these are here to pique your interest uh, for us to come back to, and I'm gonna move on for now. What's our current project status? Um, we have released, uh, 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 we have made a release uh, of a jar with annotations in it. And we numbered it 0 0.3. The zero is there for a reason. It is a, a major design milestone for us in that we believe we have finally identified all the design questions that need an answer. And we have implemented an answer to each of those questions. It is the reason it's only 0.3 is that we may still change those answers in response to your feedback. Um, in terms of whether relying on the annotations might physically break your compile, because for example, if we renamed an annotation, that would cause a, a larger problem for you uh, than anything else. Uh, we are, the annotation names and package uh, name are frozen. We are not going to change them. Um, at most, the worst thing I might what that might happen is we might end up removing method targeting from the annotations. So you might not be able to put no unmarked or no marked on an individual method anymore. I don't know. I think we'll keep that, but it, that is still open to change. Uh, but the other thing that's really open to change is changes to the specification that we might make that might mean that after you annotated your entire library, you have to go back to a few places and you might have to make a few changes still. Um, other elements of our status are that we have lots of stuff up there for you to read on the website. And we have a reference implementation that you can grab and try to use. Uh, a, keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle as you do. Um, it may be a, a bumpy ride, and it is only a, ref a reference implementation. You definitely should not try to deploy it in your actual tool chain for your actual build. And even at that, um, you know, it's important for a reference implementation to really be 100% compatible with the spec that it is a reference for, and that is very important. And we are actually not quite there yet. We have more work to do on it. Still, it's probably worth playing with it, it gets most of it right. Um, tool support, at this moment in time, your nullness analysis tool that you use probably uh, won't recognize our annotations at all yet. That's partially our fault because we did finalize their package name just several months ago, um, maybe late last year. Um, when it does recognize the annotations and say, okay, these are nullness annotations, I can use these. In the beginning, it's just going to treat them, it's just going to add them to its list and it's going to treat them the same way that it, it treats everything else. Um, that's, a, that's a reasonable starting point because it does mean that people who are just looking for a good choice to put can, can go ahead and adopt the annotations, uh, but we don't want to stop there. Um, we want to have uh, semantic, um, we want to have all the tools be conformant with our specification of these details, and they are they have been in the conversation with us. They, you know, they come to the meetings. We don't expect the tools to go from, you know, to 100% conformance overnight. Um, but we do think that we can get to a situation where um, the direction of gravity pulls in that direction, where the, the, the tools are um, trending toward greater and greater uh, conformance over time. Um, the path forward from here, I can talk during the Q&A about um, what's involved in our 1.0 release, what it will mean, what we need to get there. Um, but the broader question is really, um, you know, will this project actually succeed? Will it actually become the dominant way to annotate your code and will the tools support it? And I'm going to attempt an analogy here, um, even though analogies should always be taken with a grain of salt. Um, but suppose there's like um, uh, some kind of terrible uh, pandemic affecting the world. Like, I don't know, like um, polio or smallpox or something like that. 
Um, too soon, suppose, Kevin, too soon. I know, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, this was like the 1950s, right? I'm, I'm still not over it. Um, so polio, you've, you've invented a polio vaccine, okay? And people are asking you, will this work? Will this succeed? And as the inventor of that vaccine, what would you say? You would probably say, well, people have to manufacture it. People have to ship it. Doctors have to be willing to give it and people have to show up uh, to get it. So a lot has to happen um, for it to actually succeed. It's in the hands of the community, basically. As the developer of the vaccine, they have a part to play. They have to keep responding to new strains that come out and so forth, but they they have no magic wands to, to make the thing succeed. I will quickly say that in the case of DART, the reason they were able to come land on the other side of that chasm, as I said, is that they were able to galvanize a real community effort to get all the popular libraries um, properly um, with their nullness information properly specified. And it was it, uh, apparently was a major effort that really got a lot of code converted over. And so they were able to do this. Uh, we're at the end. It's now the send help portion of the presentation. Um, we need some things from you. As I was just alluding, um, if you have an internal code base, uh, grab the annotations, try them out, and experiment with our reference implementation. Um, and if you do this, of course, the most important part is to complain to us. Anything you don't like about what it made you do with your annotations or how it behaved, we need to hear those things. We have some idea of what we think you're going to complain about, but it's much better to hear what, what actually matters to you. Uh, and what, you know, we want to know what are your barriers that you feel to adopting um, these things for real. Again, we have our guesses, but we want to hear from you. If you own a library or tool, same thing. We don't expect you to hear this, this presentation and be like, cool, I'm just going to go adopt everything today. But we do want to know what specifically are the things that you would need in order to be able to do that. If you have favorite libraries or tools that you use, maybe you could talk to them for us. We need help with that kind of thing. That would really help us. Ask them if they are at least on board in concept with adopting these annotations. And I don't know, maybe offer your help if you're if you're feeling really uh, generous. That would be nice. Again, what barriers do they have? The thing I want to say here is that we can't really responsibly declare a 1.0 release if this stuff doesn't happen. Um, we are doing all of this for the same reason that Java now has preview features. We don't want to just sit in a room and think really hard and then put it out and say, there you go. Uh, we want to get the feedback. If you're interested in getting more involved, there's some stuff to read. You can file issues. There is a mailing list. It is, let's call it extremely low traffic right now. I'd love for that to change. If you think your organization should be a member of the group, we're happy to hear from you. Uh, just talk to us about what your relationship with nullness uh, analysis is, whatever that might be. Um, and yeah, time to uh, hit us with your, your questions. And yeah, that's yep. it. Thank you, Kevin. That yep. was uh, that was very nice. Good intro. Um, I want to play devil's advocate and I asked the first question. Uh, I, I didn't know that, that shortcut. Uh, that abbreviation, how hard can it be, HHCIB? Because look, I mean, things are null or not. Two annotations, there you go. How hard can it be? Why are there so many different ones? I don't get it. <laughs> can you explain this to me? And wouldn't you like to know? I'll upload the answer to that as well as to the audience questions and the rest of the conversation soon. You may also have spotted that we skipped section three of Kevin's presentation. That was the part on Project Valhalla and we'll upload that as well as our conversation about it in a third video. If you're watching this in the future, they may already be out and appear right next to me. Otherwise, subscribe so you don't miss them. So long!